Um, you know, it's fun. I mean, we learn a lot from Harry um, in terms of a lot of things when it comes to literature, music, and things like that. But it's just nice. Like I said, I think I said this last year, but like <clears throat> our office in line has really developed a lot of different personalities, which at first is a little scary because you're like, okay, not everyone's exactly the same in terms of how they think or how they were kind of raised up and things like that. But like, it's kind of been a blessing in disguise because we got so many different um, relationships and different backgrounds that people have. And it's just nice to learn from each other. So like, it's been a great addition having them in the office in line room. Um, you know, it's a transition. Um, I, uh, we're trying some new stuff out just to see. I mean, I played a little bit of left. I played a little bit of left here um, for a few like weeks or like a year or two, and then I also played um, left tackle in high school. So it's a transition. So it's early right now. So I'm still working at it, but I'm willing to try out anything. And I'm, it's a new challenge, and I'm willing to go for it. What are the biggest challenges of moving from right side to left side? Um, just getting comfortable with it. You know, it's, it's just a different, it's, I feel like there's like a different timing to it. Like in, in terms of right side, I have a different timing in terms of how I said, how I do things. And left side, I'm kind of learning that there's a little different timing to it. Um, play wise, I mean, everything, I feel great with the plays and everything like that. It's just about getting comfortable in the position, understanding what makes me comfortable, what makes the timing right for me, and just to get used to that. Do you have to like change your technique or is it just kind of getting used to lining up, going a different direction? I think it's the set techniques the same. It's just getting comfortable with it. Like Coach Studd is one of the best offensive line coaches in college football, so um, he always makes sure that we have a great technique and a great mindset whenever we come out to practices. So I don't really think I've changed anything in terms of the teaching. Like he hasn't told me anything different about my technique or what I need to change. All he's told me is just you just need to go and keep working at it, keep improving day in and day out because it's only day six, so we still have a lot more to go. What's it like? Go ahead. What's, just what's it like having there next to you? Um, it's pretty cool. I mean, like, so was, Thayer was a big brother to me when I first came here, and now me being next to him is kind of like a culmination of just, like, me and him working together and him being my big brother, and then now I get to finally play next to him, which I never even thought was a possibility, but, you know, anything's possible. So I just, I'm just very humbled to get a chance to play next to Thayer, who's obviously one of the best tackles in America, and now transitioning a guard where he, I believe that he can do that as well. I mean, he's just one of the best office alignment and college football right now, so it's just an amazing opportunity. And that group, you essentially have guys, four guys that play tackle, two guys from Paris playing guard. What, is, what does that give you that maybe the, the more traditional look doesn't? Um, I think we're a lot uh, athletic. I think there's probably an athleticism part to it, but I mean, everyone we have here at Ohio State is athletic, whether they play guard, tackle, or center. I mean, it's just that. Those are the five guys that are playing right now. We're going to still keep working at it, try to find the best five. So that's just kind of the mindset. But that's, I mean, we're all athletic. I mean, everyone we have is athletic. So it's pretty much the same type of offensive line. We're all strong, big, athletic. We do all those things that we've been doing. And it doesn't sound like that's definite that that's going to happen, that you stay on the left side or the third foot guard. How much shuffling has gone on even through six days? Um, there's been a little bit of shuffling here or there. I mean, what I'll say is that, we're still trying to look for our best five. That's always been the mindset whenever we come into camps like this. No matter if people started the year before or if people coming in that are really highly talented or whatever, it's always about finding our best five and finding the best five that work. So whatever that means, however long that takes, we're going to go ahead and do that. So how, how has Juwan pressed you guys to make that push where he, he could be one of those five? Um, he's been really good in film study. Um, he knows his he knows the technique. He knows the plays. He knows when to make calls. I mean, like he's been really impressive in terms of his growth from last year to this year. Um, that's been impressive. Um, I've been impressed with just his attitude and how he comes out to practice every day with a lot of juice and a lot of energy. That's kind of uplifted the offensive line a little bit whenever we come out because now we have that we kind of bounce off of him because as a unit together we kind of bounce off one of another. So him coming out with a lot of juice and energy kind of just rubs off on me, which rubs off to Paris, which rubs off to every single person in the office and line unit, ones through threes. So it's just really good to have him and having that energy around. Nick, we've been having a lot of conversation now about these guys, why each of you guys has, has sort of shown the coaches and why that's why you're lining up now. Did you feel like, not just in the past week, but in the past year, that you've shown them something new that would make them consider you a left tackle? I don't think I've shown them anything new. I just want to work hard and play and do whatever I can to make this team better. 
whatever that is, whatever position that is, I'm willing to do that because the number one goal here is for us to go ahead and graduate and win a national championship. That's always been the goal. So that hasn't changed in terms of last year, hasn't changed since I've been here. I've always just tried to make this team better, whatever they need me to do, whenever, whatever they ask me to do, and just to keep improving every single day and get better. And then down the line, we get to that national championship title and we win that, so. Um, you know, that's the mindset. I mean, everything's a responsibility. I don't. I would have never say that like one position's way more important than the other. Like every single guy on the line, it takes all five for us to block and to make sure that we all get the job done. Because if one of us messes up, the play's dead. So it takes all five of us. So every single position is important. Um, I just want to play as hard as I can, and I and I just want to play even harder because now I have an even new position. So I really just want to work at it and keep working at it and trying to see if I can get comfortable with it. Um, like I said, we have a lot of different personalities, so it all comes with different uh, strokes. I mean, I would say Thayer is really good at making sure that we keep on track and we keep focused when we're in um, on the field and we're practicing and stuff like that. And when it comes to like technique and things like that and making sure we're focused in that department, I think he's really good there. Um, we have a lot of guys that when it comes to film study that make sure that we're on track. I mean, Harry's really good at film study. Luke's also another one that's been really focused on film study and stuff like that. Um, and then there's also guys that should kind of lift us up when it's just like the like in the little hours that we have where we're just sitting around doing whatever. Um, guys that are just funny to be around, fun to fun to hang out with, and there's just so many different personalities. So like, there's a lot of different areas to that question, but I think every single one of us has contributed somehow, some way to being part of that. Everybody's got their own personalities, their own unique blend, kind of bring it all together. So what yes, sir. How much has Bayer helped you personally? Playing left um, he's helped me a lot. I mean, you know, him being right next to me, he can he gives me tips on what he's done and what he thinks worked in the past. But and like also he says this. He also says that you have to grow into that position yourself. Like you can't, I can't be Thayer Mumford. You know, I can't be whoever. I can only be Nicholas Petit Fair. So that's the main thing that I'm trying to focus on right now. It's just being myself, being the best that I can be, whatever that is, day by day, and just keep improving. Um, that's a yeah, that's a, that's a tough question. I mean, because me and Thayer have been together for so long that I feel like I'm kind of like, in essence, just like me and him are just like brothers at this point, you know. I mean, like, even though we came from different backgrounds, different different states and stuff like that, but I mean, like, I feel like we and him are really comparable in terms of just our work ethic and how hard we work. And I feel like that's the reason why I we are comparable in that nature is because I learned it from him. I learned his worth ethic, the way that he came to practice every single day, the way he did the film study, the way that he was professional on and off the field. And that just kind of rubbed off on me, me, me being a young guy and now I'm here. We're both the older guys in the group. And like, I just kind of feel like we're kind of similar in that nature. Um, we go through the shoots a lot, so that's something that we've been doing a lot, just to go through the shoots and stuff like that. Um, always just thinking about knee bend, making sure that we're stretched out and ready to go, and just having mental cues to make sure that we have good knee bend, first step, first step, drive step with the knee in the ground. So just little mental cues that we have, and then we also have little drills that we do, but what it comes down to is just us going out to practice and just doing it, you know? You can, you can never get too many reps, because you can always get another rep to get better. Um, it's all about encouragement. That's one thing that we always talked about at the very beginning of this uh, winter is that one of our core tenets for our, for our whole team is about encouragement and making sure that we encourage people. So that's where I feel like I'm really strong at is that I'll always try to encourage people and I'll always try to give insight on my past histories and my past struggles, which every office lineman here has have had a struggle somehow, some way, whether it was from playing time, trying to get comfortable playing, trying to gain weight like myself or trying to lose weight like Dewan. Like everyone has their own journey and their own struggle. So it just kind of depends on whoever that person reaches out to or leeches onto, them inspiring them to 
keep going, keep keep grinding, keep improving every single day. He's probably one of the hardest workers on the offensive line. So that's how I'm, that's how I'm going to explain that. Like Paris Johnson came in with one of the best worth ethics and one of the best mindsets I've ever seen someone come into Ohio State with, whatever position. Like Paris was one of a kind when he came in. Um, he had such a good mindset. He was so focused, so determined. And from that year, from that, from when he first came in to now, it's just culminating into who he is as a player. And I'm very glad that Coach Studd sees it as well, and I hope that the whole nation sees it as well, how good of a player Paris Johnson can be and how much work ethic and how dedicated he is to his craft. How are you, I guess, starting to see the work ethic on the field, maybe especially as he's now becoming a guard as a player for the rest of the He just comes in to work every single day. I remember when we asked Paris uh, last year during the season, hey, would you want to switch to guard? And then he was like, I'm, I'm down for it. And he did that not only for the love of the team and for the unit, but just because he's capable of doing that because he's that talented of a player already. And he's that determined and that skilled to work at something even if he's not comfortable with it. And now like he's culminating into that player, whatever position he was told he was told to play, whatever he's playing right now, he's just letting his he's letting who he is as a person shine. Nate, we've probably been asked this before I walked up here, but people are naturally either right handed or left handed. Uh, do you feel more natural on the left at left tackle? I mean what, how much of a switch is that for? Um, I mean, I, I, it's kind of a little bit here and there. I mean, it's just getting comfortable with the timing and things like that. Like, so I am like naturally right-handed, but I mean, I have done a lot of stuff with my left hand when I was a kid and stuff like that. Like eating, I usually eat with my left hand and stuff like that. So it's not like something that like is foreign to me, me having to play left or right. Like I've done it before in high school. I've done it here. So, you know, it's just me, what it really comes down to is just me getting comfortable with the timing me getting as many reps as I can and just keep repping it out because that's the, that's the best way to become a better offensive lineman, to become a better football player, is to get reps. Whenever you can get a rep, you get a rep. And if you mess up, it's all right. Come back in, watch the film, learn from your coaches, see what you did wrong, come back and do it again. And keep repping it out until you get it right and then build on that. My best guess is that we're going to put the best five we can. And whatever position that is, I'm willing to play it if I'm one of the best five, and I hope I am. And we're just going to keep working at it. Nicholas, I think you signed an NIL deal the first morning that it started. Just curious how that process has gone for you. Um, it's been nice. I mean, I wanted to make sure that I focused on fall camp and the season. So, I mean, overall, like, there's – a few deals that I, uh, people have reached out to me after that deal. Um, I actually have a little portfolio now of like all, like a, a lot of you guys, a lot of you reporters, thank you so much for um, writing articles about me, about my first NIL deal and talking about it because that kind of has given me a portfolio for me to hand to other people if they were ever to ask me like, well, what have you done in NIL so far? Or how are you marketable? I've been, I have a portfolio now of different articles and um, little tidbits and little uh, uh, tweets and stuff like that that you guys have written about me. So I just wanted to first say thank you guys <clears throat> for doing that. That's very, I'm very appreciative. I'm very humbled by that. But um, you know, just there's a few deals that I've been that people have reached out to me because of that first NIL deal and because of just the power that Ohio State has. So right now I'm still just focused on fall camp and then. Hopefully, once fall camp's over and we have a little gap right before Minnesota, which we're still going to be focused on that, that it make sure I make sure that it doesn't affect me when it comes to school and when it comes to football, and I make sure that I can balance that, which is a new balancing act that we all have to learn. So I hope that we can all do it in a very um, good fashion. You sound like you were, Last question right here. You were prepared for it. Uh, this new balancing act, like you've been practicing in the backyard or something. I mean, uh, how long coming with the NIL is um, well, I mean, we started learning about the NIL really coming into effect about two, maybe two and a half weeks prior to the courts making the decision. But you knew it was coming down the road, is what I'm saying, right, as a player? You didn't? No. I, I really, I'm telling you, like, where it was like around like two weeks, two and a half weeks when they came out saying, hey, this NIL opportunity is coming out, be prepared, 
We don't know if it's going to happen yet or not, but if it does, we don't want you guys to get caught off guard either by doing things you don't you aren't you don't know yet, or to be caught off guard and be behind on the curve behind be behind on the ball. So um, in terms of that nature, I, it was still new to everyone. It's still new to me. I feel like from my high school at Berkeley Prep to me being here at Ohio State prepared me for an opportunity like this. It's not necessarily they prepared me for NIL opportunities. It's that the power of Ohio State and the people that have been around me and all the coaches and all the staff and everyone that's around me, they prepared me for an opportunity like NIL. It's just that no one knew that NIL was going to be a possibility. So I'm very humbled and grateful to have those people around me and have everyone that taught me and kind of grew me into the person I am today, which is why I feel like um, we were all kind of prepared for NIL. How deserving are y'all for having to keep to justifiable? I mean, a lot of people thought this was a long time coming, that, that college athletes would take advantage of this kind of situation. Did you ever give that any thought before? Um, you know, it's just very humbling to get the opportunity. That's kind of the main point I want to emphasize. Um, you know, we're here to play. We're here to play college football and to get a degree. That's been the number one goal for Ohio State ever since I got here, and NIL is just a new opportunity for that. Um, I'm very grateful to everyone that came before me that kind of fought for the NIL opportunity because I understand that as athletes, um, we're not just student athletes. We also have personalities as well. We have things that kind of make us shine as a human being, not only just by what we do on the field and what we do in the classroom. We all have different personalities when it comes to things that we're passionate about. So I'm very grateful for that opportunity for us to be able to do that as athletes now and to shine in a new stage. So like in terms of like a long time coming, I think it was a long time coming just for us to be able to shine with our personalities, which we have done before, but NIL gives us a new opportunity to kind of flourish in that. Awesome, very well said, thank you. Thanks for watching. Be sure to click on that subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing. Come visit us over at BuckeyeGrove.com for all the best Ohio State information on the web.